Hello and welcome to this video demonstration on DB Architect for Simplicity 9.5. In this video, we will demonstrate how to generate new database points from scratch using 61850 SCL files and using those generated database points to create new pictures. So let's begin. So first of all, what is DB Architect? Well, the short answer is that DB Architect is an application used to generate a large number of database points in Simplicity 9.5 SCADA databases using different sources. Currently, two sources are supported. You've got 61850 SEL files or CSV I.O. schedules and can even be extended to support other formats. So why do we need DB Architect? Well, to answer that, let's consider the traditional method of populating a SCADA database from scratch, as shown in the simplified diagram. When you're starting a new project, you're given a master I.O. schedule of the points that will be used to populate the SCADA database, which will normally be a CSV file or an SCL file if you're using 61850. The master I.O. schedule, however, is not normally supported within SCADA, and so has to undergo a translation process before it can be read. This translation process normally involves a script using an application such as Excel, which converts the master I.O. schedule to a format that is readable by SCADA. The problem sometimes is that the master I.O. schedule format varies from project to project, just as the way an SEL file is organized can vary from vendor to vendor. So with every new project, you would need to maintain and manage your scripts to stay relevant. In the worst case scenario, you would be manually populating the SCADA database point by point, which is not only inefficient, but very much error prone, introducing issues that you wouldn't even catch until you were on site testing with live data. DB Architect solves these issues by simplifying the process as shown in this diagram. As you can see, the master I.O. schedule is fed directly into DB Architect as an input file, which is then used to populate the Simplicity SCADA database directly. By doing away with the translation process, we're not only making it easier to manage the population of a database from scratch, but we've managed to minimize the errors that can be introduced by a manual process, resulting in greater overall efficiency. So let's show the process in action. For this demo, we'll start with a blank project copied from a template and show how we populate a database with a source SCL file using DB Architect. We'll then create a sample picture using the newly generated database points in order to show the new points in action. We start with the Simplicity Workbench by opening a PowerLink template project. This is necessary because the PowerLink template contains all the classes and screen objects that we will use with DB Architect. Using a blank project will not work because these will not have the class definitions required by DB Architect, not to mention the screen object libraries will not be available. We'll then need to copy the PowerLink template project to our new project, which for this demo we'll appropriately call DBA demo. So this needs to be placed within the projects folder. We then open the newly created project in order to start using it. From here, we need to start the project before running DB Architect. Once the project has fully started, we can launch DB Architect from the workbench by double clicking on its respective icon from the system tree. So here we have the main user interface for DB Architect. Note how there are three main branches to its system tree corresponding to each of the main data sources it supports. For this demo, we will be concentrating on the SCL file branch, which gives us a list of the available SCL files in our system. We will be discussing the CSV file branch in a separate video. Expanding the SCL file branch gives us a list of the SCL files currently available in our system. In this demo, we have two files which we can use as a source. Clicking on one of the SCL files gives you a brief description of that SCL file's contents. You can then load the SCL file itself by right-clicking on the branch and selecting load from the pop-up menu. This will read the contents of the SCL file, which you can then review using the various types available on the right-hand pane. You can also review a brief list of all the class objects defined in that SCL file, 
using the points list tab. So you can see from the branch here that all of the class objects defined for that SCL file have been loaded. Now we can choose to import the entire SCL file just by clicking on the checkbox next to the SCL files branch itself or alternatively we can choose to import a subset of this SCL file by just clicking on the class objects that we're interested in. For this demo we'll just import the entire SCL file so we do that by clicking on this checkbox here. We then right click on the branch itself and then select the join rights SCADA database from selected option from the pop-up menu. Once you select that it will then start its processing and then it will ask you for the destination project where you want these generated points um, located. So for this demo of course we'll be using our DBA demo project so we select that then click OK and the DBA system starts doing its generation process. So depending on the number of points that you're actually trying to import, this could take a few minutes, but after a while it will finish. And if there are any um, errors in the import, it will actually log those and tell you why some of these imports have failed. So normally it'll be items like um, it's missing a required attribute or it doesn't actually just um, match with what it um, thinks the 6150 protocol document should be. So once it's finished, it'll tell you how many ge objects generated and once you click OK that's pretty much it you've already imp imported your database points into Simplicity so in order to start using them we will need to exit out of DB Architect and then stop the project itself we will then need to copy the master data into runtime data in order to start using those objects So once we've done that, then you can see that we've now got a list of the database objects that we were defined that we had defined in that um, SCL file, and they're now actually class objects defined within Simplicity itself. So if you open up any of these class objects, you'll see that all of the information that we had in the SCL file has been translated directly into class objects within Simplicity. So to cap off this demo. Let's use one of the objects that we've just imported and place it into a screen for our use. Um, before we can do that, however, we need to link the project that we've currently defined with uh, uh, the PowerLink Connect system. So we do that by going into Explorer and then going into the data folder of your Simplicity installation and looking for a file called ipower.ini. We need to edit this inside a text editor. Any text editor will do and you will need to find a section called project connection. So these are the projects that are currently connected to our PowerLink Connect system. So since we've just created a new project called DBA Demo, we will need to add this into this project connection section. You then just need to save that, exit out of your text editor, and then we can run the project again. So once the project has started running, we can then define our new screen. So when defining a new screen within PowerLink Connect, you need to start from a template picture. This one is called iPower Default Picture, and it contains all the scripts and the um, objects that it needs in order to properly function within the PowerLink Connect system. A blank picture will not work because it doesn't have the initialization scripts necessary and you'll get some error messages when you try to run it. Now, if we use this as our starting point, we then edit that picture and we will need to save it since this is our template. So we want to, we don't want to overwrite it. So we'll create a new picture and I'll just call this one my demo picture. Now, once we've got this picture, we can then start drawing into it and I'll just draw some bus bars as a point of reference. So I'll have to forgive my drawing skills. Okay, so once we've got that then we can just put in a class object that we've just imported. So we'll select, you can actually use a different class ID depending on which ones we've already got. 
but for now we'll just use the TPC and we'll use one of the XCBRs that we've just imported into the system. So here you'll see that it comes up with the default animation that's predefined for Powerlink Connect. You can actually change the look and feel of this using any of the predefined animations that are available in this library. So you can either change it to a horizontally oriented switch or circuit breaker or you can change it to a vertically oriented animation. But either way, I mean, once you've got the object there, that's pretty much all you need to do. So you save it and then you can go and test the screen if you like. And from here you can see that you've already got a fully functioning control. Of course, because we don't have any live data, the controls are actually coming up as disabled. But if you do have live data, then you will actually see the available controls for this system. And that's pretty much it. In this video, we've discussed what TP Architect is and what it can do, as well as demonstrated the process of importing an SCL file into the SCADA database. Finally, we demonstrated how to quickly use the imported objects in generating new pictures. If you'd like to go into further detail, you can contact us either by phone or email, or you can go to our website for some additional reference materials. Thank you for your time, and have a good day.